Welcome to the Everything Under the Sun podcast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Regina Miller and your host, and I'm joined in studio by Ken Prow and Andy Robb. And we are talking about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade this week and the holiday season. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm excited you, too. <laughs> yeah. Your oh, excitement is nowhere near the level of Andy's. I know. Well, it's Andy, a little scary how, how excited Andy is. I love Thanksgiving. He does. Well, Andy actually has been drawing like the, the, the uh, turkeys with your hand, you know, that you do on <laughs> cardboard yeah. and they're like hanging around the studio and he's been doing that for a week it's very festive thank you <laughs> thank you very much so uh yeah we're going to be talking about the macy's thanksgiving day parade and we'll be interviewing susan tercero the executive producer of the most famous thanksgiving day parade in america i know and she's going to talk about like what impacts weather has and how they plan around that because it's got to be crazy with those giant balloons but i'll tell you i'll be parked right in front of the tv uh, I always do this, so I get my cup of hot chocolate. Like, normally I have coffee in the mornings, but at Thanksgiving morning, I got my hot chocolate. I sit down. I watch the entire Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade. <laughs> That's awesome. While someone else cooks. Usually my yeah, mother-in-law. <laughs> Usually my mother-in-law is cooking. So, um, But do you guys have a favorite? Like, do you have a favorite Thanksgiving food? A favorite Thanksgiving food? Yeah, oh, right. it's stuffing. Absolutely stuffing. stuffing. Yeah. Do you do it with a sausage? No, I do not. But that is awesome. Okay. So you got to try that. What about you? I'm Andy? gonna have to go with stuffing as long as it's my mom's stuffing. But if uh, if not, I just gotta go with the good old turkey. Okay. Anything Big you fan. hate? Anything I hate? I am yeah, not a. I am some weird thing. Sweet potatoes. Table. Yeah, sweet potatoes. me too. I'm not really. I'm not really big on the the yams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yams. yeah. yeah and yams. they put like marshmallows in them. Yeah, oh, the marshmallows are weird. What about some you? People love those. Um, well, I actually like uh, the sweet potato casserole that has like the brown sugar and and nuts on top because it's kind of like um, it's more like pumpkin pie. It's basically like a pie. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, but anyway, we're so excited because we're going to be talking about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. What it takes to plan that. We're so excited that Susan took some time to talk to us while she was doing preps, and it's been crazy for them. They actually planned this for a year and a half. So they've already started planning the one for uh, 2020. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And speaking of planning, we're also talking to Max Vito, meteorologist here, uh, about planning your trip to and from grandma's house or wherever you're going (laughs) for Thanksgiving. So he's taking a look at the weather across the nation for several days during the holidays. Stay with us. From AccuWeather's Global Headquarters in State College, Pennsylvania, it's everything under the sun. Here's your host, Regina Miller. Well, I'm pretty excited to be joined on the phone right now by Susan Tercero. She's the executive producer of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Thank you for taking some time to talk to me today, Susan. Thank you so much for having me. In my house, I just got to tell you, we watch it every year. And so we're not allowed to hear any Christmas music. There's not allowed to be any Christmas commercials, <laughs> no Christmas movies, nothing until after Santa Claus comes down at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. I think a lot of people feel that way. I think that's what's so great about the parade is that, you know, it's really, it's not only is it celebrating and kicking off Thanksgiving, but it's ushering in the holiday season with Santa. So that, that sounds accurate to me. Right, <laughs> right. Give me a little glimpse into what your day looks like, the planning and what's going on right now. You know, we have a lot going on. This is really, now that we've hit uh, November, it's really uh, moving forward with all of all the plans that we've been doing for the past 18 months are really, really coming to a head now. So on Saturday, we had Balloon Fest where we debuted the new balloons. We've all already had a clown you, so we were actually able to get all the clowns ready for the parade as well. We move right on into finishing, putting the final touches on the floats, working with uh, the different different bands to try to make sure they have everything that they need and getting all the performances finalized. So it's really just putting the finishing touches on every single last uh, detail, having meetings um, with not only the city, but all of our volunteers. So it's a lot of, uh, it's pretty crazy these days, but you know, it's, it's all exciting and it's, it's coming together. Wow. So a year and a half, because that was going to be my next question was to ask <laughs> you how much time goes into planning the day of the parade. And so you've got a year and a half involved in each one. 
Yeah. So, I mean, we're already talking about 2019. So sometimes I slip up and say it's 2019 when we're in currently in 2018. <laughs> um, but, you know, we actually start with selecting our bands. And then we move on to, you know, trying to identify what are going to be the new balloons and the new floats for the year. And so there's a lot that a lot that really goes into trying to plan uh, that far in advance, especially for the bands that are coming in from out of town. They've got to plan and uh, they, they've got to get all that stuff ready before coming in. I would imagine you can get all these plans going and the one thing none of us can plan up until it gets closer to time is the weather (laughs) so you are so right about that (laughs) right so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you prepare for that what kind of impact can the weather have on your event for example you've been talking about the new balloons coming in I'm going to ask you what those are because I want to know what they are (laughs) coming up in a minute some of them but how would the cold impact those you know, we do this rain or shine, and, and it's not, uh, this time of year can be unpredictable, but we try to do our best to try and plan for it. So we actually have a meteorologist that works with us on site to sort of monitor all of those conditions. As far as cold goes, we do our best to try to dress and prepare our marchers and make sure that they are aware of uh, what to expect. And, you know, we costume about 4,000 people along the parade route, and so our team that handles that, they ensure that people are dressing in layers, they provide proper clothing for that because that's really, I think, what impacts us the most. Of course, we're working, uh, you know, feverishly overnight setting things up. So, you know, we do our best to try to um, just prepare all of our workers and our volunteers for really getting through that cold time. We were talking about the balloons a little bit, too. What kind of concerns or do you guys have to take special precautions like when you've got wind as a concern? You know, you Mm -hmm. said you have the meteorologists on staff. Like, how have they handled that kind of thing in the past? Well, there's a lot of different things. You know, we were talking about with the cold and the balloons. I mean, they um, they actually, you know, they're filled with helium. So uh, helium experiences what they refer to as uh, expands and contracts based on how um, how warm it is outside. So if it's really cold, then the helium is going to contract the balloons. And so we have to actually fill it with more helium and we do a top off overnight. That's what we refer to it as where we go in and we put more helium overnight so that the balloons are nice and full in the morning. So those are some of the things that we have to look out for. Um, as far as winds, you know, we work very closely with the city of New York. We have certain guidelines that we adhere to, especially for our large balloons in certain conditions, we, we won't fly the balloons in. So, But that has to be pretty severe wind conditions. So we're talking about sustained 23 miles an hour winds and gusts up to 34. So we work along with uh, meteorologists on site. We have uh, wind monitoring stations along the parade route. And we also have uh, NYPD, members of the NYPD who help us guide those balloons during the entire parade route, and so they help us monitor those as well. I thought it was really cool recently I saw a video where you do the uh, balloon fest where you have to, like, work with everybody to, like, even you don't think about going around a corner and how everybody has to be so in tune with each other. Yeah, so we have a team of uh, flight management, actually, and they're they're people that, um, they're pilots, we refer to them as pilots and captains, so you have pilots (laughs) who are who are, um, you know, who are managing the flight of the balloon, and then you have the captains who are managing the handlers on the balloon to ensure that they're following the pilot's instructions. So these flight management folks have actually, a lot of them um, have over 20 years of experience. So these are really experienced people that return every single year. You have to have a good number of parades under your belt before you even get to certain levels within that management team. And then every single year we have these other trainings that happen throughout the year so people can actually, so the flight management team actually has experience trying to maneuver the balloon and the people underneath the balloon through various conditions. So actually, you know, in a time when it, you know, Balloon Fest, we saw a little bit of winds. So it actually allowed uh, the teams to kind of practice um, what would be, a, you know, maybe an extreme case because, of course, when you're coming down parade, or you're coming down the parade route in New York City, you have buildings that typically block some of those crosswinds that you experience. Um, but it gives them a good chance to see how they're going to interact as a team um, and learn how to, especially with new balloons, see what the difference is are and how that balloon is going to react in a windy situation. Yeah, I guess I never really thought of that, but based upon the shape of the balloon or the length of it, it's going to react completely differently than maybe another balloon on the route. We don't really know. We have, you know, we have certainly engineering analysis that we take a look at to, um, we that we can sort of predict how we think the balloon is going to behave. Um, but until we get into those situations, some of those things, you know, are you're, you're not really going to know until we get there. And to your point, the length of the balloon and the and the shape of the balloon sort of dictates how 
how it performs in a crosswind situation. You know, just out of curiosity, what are some of your new balloons that you're really excited about this year? Well, we are so excited about Goku, which is actually from Dragon Ball Super Broly, which is a new movie that's coming out. And, you know, Dragon Ball Z has been, uh, is about 30 years old. So this is really exciting that we actually get to bring this character to life. We also have uh, four cute little elf balloons that are actually from a new movie that's coming out on Netflix called The Christmas Chronicles. So it's Fleck, Bjorn, Jojo, and Hug, which are uh, part of the characters within that that movie, which will uh, air on Thanksgiving Day. We also have Friends With You, Little Cloud, which Friends With You is an artist collective, and it's part of our Blue Sky Gallery series. So it's where we work with artists, and we've worked with different ones in the past, like Jeff Koons and um, Mirakami, and a lot of different artists sort of gives us a different take on the balloons that we wouldn't normally see. We also have our own Christmas celebration star, Macy's own Christmas celebration star, Sunny, the Snow Pal. And we also have uh, uh, some balloonicles, which are these inflatable pieces that fit over a vehicle. So we refer to them as balloonicles. And those are from, so you see giant bowling ball, um, 16 foot tall bowling pins that are all um, operated by a driver inside. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That is, so, is that the first year for those? That is the first year. It's really funny. And then it's going to be flanked by two um, giant bowling shoe cars. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. I love it. That's great. I know. So, you know, we're going to try and set up the the bowling pins and have the, uh, you know, have the bowling ball, um, you know, knock down the pins. So it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. It's, it's a gag, you know, Macy's is, uh, the Macy's parade is known for some of its uh, kitschiness and its, and the sight gags. And so that's certainly right in line with that. I think the, I think the viewers at home are going to love that one. I think so too. It sounds great. Now you have these bands and I would assume they've got like equipment, maybe, you know, amps and stuff like that. Do you have to prepare anything differently for like floats that you know of, depending upon if there's going to be like rain or, you know, wet precipitation, (laughs) maybe wet snow, something like that? You know, I think we what we do our best with is trying to, you know, all of our, our speakers and things like that have waterproof covering. You know, the we provide umbrellas, very large umbrellas for the celebrities. Um, I think the people <laughs> it may affect the most probably are the marching bands. You know, usually marching bands in, in cold and in uh, rain, you know, they have to sort of make alterations to how their band um, plays because I know usually like wood, woodwinds and things like that can't necessarily march in rain the same way as the brass and percussion instruments can. Right. And I personally marched in bands nowhere near the size of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. <laughs> I was in a marching band and I remember having to wear the when we had to wear the poncho over top of things or we had to keep I played trumpet and we'd have to keep our mouthpiece in the pockets just to keep warm you know yeah. so that type of thing so <laughs> I know the bands definitely have to prepare a little differently for that do you ever have to adjust anything about the route based on based ever, on weather yeah no, we really haven't had to do that. I mean, there, there's been some things that we do, like um, we do have some plans in place. We have kiddos on the float, so we have different plans in place so that, you know, if it's really, really cold or, heaven forbid, there's snow, <laughs> we, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> you know, we have plans to sort of delay putting those children on the float so that we can handle that, you know. But, no, we haven't had to affect the route because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a street, so there's not a lot of a lot of change that needs to be done as a result of um, inclement weather. You know, I was wondering too. For you personally, what's the most stressful part of executing a parade of this size? You know, I think there are a lot of factors in that. There's a lot of stresses. <laughs> I mean, I, I will say I personally get very stressed out about being cold just for me. Yeah, <laughs> so, I'm, I am 100% with you there. Yeah, so I, that's, the, that's the thing that I, I, start to, I start to obsess about, like, is how cold it's going to be. Because the rain, you know, you, you're, there comes a point where, like, you're going to get wet and you're just going to be wet. And that's, there's really not much mm-hmm. um, that you can do about that, you know. And we certainly watch for those things. Obviously, we don't, we don't like a windy day. But I think personally, being cold, once you're cold, it's it and that's a long day to be cold so you know we we do our best to try and let all the people that are marching in the in the parade know and be aware of of the inclement weather and how they can prepare for that which is just layer 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 i've seen sometimes when it's been the um wet cold and yes. i'm like i can't there's nothing worse than being wet and then cold because <laughs> you just can't work. you know it's so funny because i distinctly remember one year it was particularly wet and cold and it was our it was our 80th parade and we had I remember thinking, oh, gosh, nobody's going to show up for this. But I can't tell you there was still how many people still showed up for that day. Just 
people waiting and they didn't care. The kids didn't care. Everybody was in a good mood, which was odd to me right. <laughs> because it was, they were drenched. But right. I think everybody still, you know, listen, they had a plan and that plan was to show up that morning for parade day and they were going to be there rain or shine because they knew we were going to be there rain or shine. So we have this obligation to still put on a fantastic parade, even if we're drenched. Right. So that's exactly what we do. And then, you know, on the back end, there's a lot that has to be done really after a, a particularly wet parade. So that's that's the thing that we really don't like. But during the parade, you know, you can get through it. Right. <laughs> you're going to be... You know, you're going to be a little you're going to be a little damp. <laughs> yeah, you'll be ready to get inside and have some hot chocolate or something after that's over. Ab- but... <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. The real the real work comes after the after a wet parade, though, when we you know, we have 4000 costumes, we have balloons and we have things that need to dry out, you know, because you have to turn that around immediately. So that's the, the piece of it that becomes very difficult for us. So nobody likes a wet parade. So I'm also told there's uh, some interactive aspects to this parade this year, right? Yeah, actually there are. You know, this is actually going to be our third year uh, working with uh, Verizon 360. So on Verizon's YouTube channel, they have a live telecast of the parade route in various points. So using a 360 camera, and they also have hosts in a different location on the parade route. So you're actually seeing the parade come down the street, and there's interactive buttons um, that you can you can click on actually while you're watching it to get some fun facts about the parade. It's definitely a unique vantage point because, you know, you, you can watch the telecast on NBC and see the show in a different from a different performance angle. Um, but this angle actually captures the spirit of what it's like to sit on the parade route, see the parade, see the balloons up in the sky pretty much directly over your head. And, um, and then we have some different cameras um, that are capturing the parade along the route all through this Verizon experience. Oh, wow, that is really cool. So it kind of reminds me of pop-up video that used to be on like MTV. It, so the information exactly the way it kind is. of pops up there? Yeah. Okay. You know, you think about the way I think people are experiencing different, um, they're experiencing different things, like whether it was, you know, the Pokemon Go craze, or this isn't so much augmented reality, but it definitely, it does do that in a way where you're watching the, you're watching what's happening in front of you, and you get to sort of, you know, see little tidbits that it's it's non-traditional, you know, you think about how you would normally watch TV, and this is certainly a different way to do so. It makes a lot of sense, because in this day and age, everyone between gaming and everything else, people want to be in the midst of whatever it is that's going on. So it makes sense. That's the direction things kind of start moving with this parade, you know, as it moves forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I think everybody loves to learn more about these kinds of things. They want to know the tidbits that they're not going to hear on a traditional broadcast. And so this is a way to do that. And to your point, it does actually gamify the experience, which is really what people want. So I, I think we're, as we move forward with this parade and evolve what it is, because it's 92 years, so there's there's definitely history and tradition um, involved in it, but there's also newness that we have to bring to it every year. We have to keep and preserve the things that everyone expects, but then we also need to meet this new need and new way of um, consuming media. And so that's, I think, one of the ways that we're doing that. Roughly how many people, you know, do you think will maybe attend the parade in person, do you expect, and and how many are expected to view it around the country or the world? Our estimates are about uh, three and a half million uh, spectators along the route. And you can see that people standing um, in the streets. I mean, it it goes several blocks deep, but then also all of the buildings, you know, when you look up, you see people watching uh, from the buildings as well. And then we have about uh, 50 million viewers um, watch it worldwide. Wow. Well, how does the, yeah, that's all I can say is, wow. <laughs> it's such a yes, I mean, it's, they're <laughs> staggering, the numbers, I know. <laughs> right, right. Well, how does the uh, production team, like, how do they coordinate with, like, the city? You mentioned local authorities and different things to mm-hmm. keep the spectators, performers, everybody safe during the parade. So we work very closely with the city of New York, as I said, and there's several different agencies that are responsible for ensuring the safety of that parade. So we really follow, we follow um, the direction of the NYPD for all of the safety and security guidelines, and nobody knows how to do that on this scale better than NYPD. There's just, there's no one in the world that knows it better than they do. So we we work very closely with them. We have several meetings and walkthroughs to prepare and plan, and they love this event just as much as we do and just as much as the, the city and the country does. So it's it's very important to them that, you know, they keep, a, they keep everybody safe, they keep the parade safe, and we all do so by working, having a very 
close partnership on on the parade. I think it's very telling about how the city operates and how they coordinate and handle things on this scale and the way they're able to do that. So we, you know, we really couldn't do it without them. And, and we certainly follow all of their guidance. Give me a little bit of, you know, like the background of, of how the parade started. Sure. So the parade actually began in 1924. And it was started by the employees of Macy's. You know, a lot of them were European immigrants, and they wanted a time to be able to celebrate. And they bring, actually bring the, the tradition of parades, which really happened a lot in Europe, to New York City, but also to Macy's and to be able to usher in the holidays with this type of parade. And it started out as a Christmas parade and then a little later on moved to a Thanksgiving parade. But uh, the, the balloons themselves actually didn't come in until 1927 when Macy's hired a visual designer and artist who was actually a puppeteer. His name was Tony Sarg. And he created these magnificent creatures that were larger than life, basically like giant puppets, um, and eventually um, had them filled with helium so that they could float up in the sky. So really that came from him, which was, you know, if you think about, it's remarkable to think about it now. And really the only time the parade didn't happen uh, was was for a few years during uh, World War II. Um, oh, okay. And we actually donated the rubber from the balloons back to the war efforts. But other than that, it's been going strong ever since. And the parade route actually used to be a lot longer. It started up at like 145th Street and uh, Convent Avenue. Um, so thankfully, we're not that long anymore because yeah. that, that's a really long parade route if you think about <laughs> <Right>. it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's a lot of walking. <laughs> Yeah, so it's had it's certainly seen its evolution over time and and I think it was a little I think it was over 50 almost 60 years ago probably that we eventually got picked up by uh NBC broadcast. Um and so we've been on air ever since and it's it's really just grown from there. Well, I'll tell you what. I really hope you have, you know, fantastic just appropriately cold weather and uh, <laughs> exactly. nice day. Don't want for, it too hot. <laughs> right. Nice day for the event. Want it to feel like Thanksgiving, but not too cold. And we definitely don't want it wet and cold. So uh, yes. thanks so much, Susan. I really appreciate it. It was a great discussion. All right. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. And of course, it goes without saying, the 92nd annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will take place on Thanksgiving Day, 9 until noon on uh, NBC. I thought you said it goes without saying. And then you just said And then he told it. us. He just told us. I already know that that it's yeah. Thanksgiving Day. Tell us what we don't know. Like, who's performing? <laughs> John Legend is oh. one of the performers. Oh, there we see, go. He knows yeah, lots of stuff. there we go. Andy knows Diana Ross. Lots of stuff. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah. And your favorite, the cast of uh, Mean Girls from the Broadway Shh. show. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very excited about that. I forgot that was a secret. Yeah. Right. Well, so, the secret's out now. Yeah. Everybody now knows. So, next up, let's get to the forecast and find out what kind of weather you can expect as you hit the roadways. I'm joined in the studio now by Max Vito, one of our meteorologists. And, Max, you're going to break it down for me. We'll do an overview, break it down, you know, kind of early in the a week and then around Thanksgiving and then perhaps some things for Black Friday and the weekend beyond, the travel home days. I know, because that's always a big time, too. So, um, you know, so if people are traveling for the early part of the week, are there any areas where we're like, oh, this is not going to be a good area for travel? You know, not really. It actually looks like a pretty quiet weekend. And even into most of Thanksgiving week, there's not a lot of big systems we're dealing with. That's good news. Uh, There is a little disturbance that we're expecting to move across uh, the plains and then perhaps into the northeast by Sunday into the early part of next week. And that could bring some light snow, some some rain showers, but overall it shouldn't have a big impact on the main travel hubs, the airports. You'll just have to watch, you know, if you're on the roadways, uh, you're, you're, you could get, hit some slippery travel yeah. um, with some coatings on roadways perhaps uh, across those areas. But overall, a pretty good weekend for travel across most of the country. So what about the folks that decide to drive the day before? So Wednesday, Wednesday's right. a big travel yeah, day so for we- drivers. Wednesday's your biggest travel day for air travel, and we're actually anticipating some record travel this year for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day is the main road travel day. Across the country, there's going to be a lot of high pressure in the east, so dry conditions from you know the southeast to the northeast, and it could be chilly still, especially in those northern areas. We'll be watching a system developing uh, over Texas and the southern plains on Wednesday, and that could bring some rain, I think, to some um, major hubs like Dallas and Houston on Wednesday, and then that will shift east 
for Thursday, perhaps into the New Orleans, Memphis area, even St. Louis. Uh, so we'll have to watch those areas for some, for some rain and perhaps minor travel delays. But overall, we're not seeing a very strong system at this point and not a lot of wind, not any snow. So not a, anticipating a lot of delays. Okay, if anything, maybe minor down there into right. parts of Texas or yeah. something just getting started. And then, you know, when folks are trying to decide the best time to travel back, you know, uh, I know some people decide they're just going to stay in place and shop, <laughs> but right. let's take a look at what's going on for the end of the week. Yeah, so of course this is eight to ten days out, so we only have a little bit of a read at, on this at this point, but we'll have to watch that system over the center of the country. It's, it could strengthen a little bit as it heads north and east, or it could head south. We're not quite sure yet, so it's not set in stone what, what happens with that system. Uh, but we'll have to wa watch if it does head north, uh, any potential snow, northern plains, upper midwest. Uh, even into the northeast. It looks like the, the colder air is going to be re retreating at that time, uh, but we'll still have to watch. There could be some, some snow and ice issues if it does head up that way for Black Friday. That's a big shopping day. And then uh, typically a lot of people like to head home on Saturday and Sunday um, after Thanksgiving. Okay, so that'll be a system to watch. And, uh, you know, fortunately, thanks for uh, talking to me about it, Max, and, and letting us know what's what it looks like in the outlook. Yeah. And fortunately, we do have the AccuWeather app. Yes. <laughs> so that will keep people up to date as we get closer, yeah. or they can go to AccuWeather.com because we are going to continually fine-tune this forecast right. the whole time. Yeah, if you have flexibility with your travel, whether that is driving at a better time of day or maybe a different day, playing with the weather forecast cast in mind and keep up to date with us. Right. Thanks, Max. You're welcome, Regina. Well, thanks so much to our guest this week, Macy's executive producer of the Thanksgiving Day Parade, Susan Tercero, and also Max Vito for keeping us informed of what we can expect with the weather. Now, Andy, my friends are really excited about next week's podcast. Actually, it's my husband's friends because they love hunting and it's all about hunting. That's right. Hunting season around the corner. And we are going to be talking with Matt Drury of Drury Outdoors as part of their 100% Wild podcast and featuring our own expert meteorologist and avid sportsman, Dave Dombeck. So make sure to check out his appearance on their 100% Wild podcast from about two weeks ago. And then next week, we'll be talking with them. So be sure to tune in and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe to AccuWeather's Everything Under the Sun, giving you the stories behind the weather and so much more. New episodes every Thursday. Just search for AccuWeather on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or visit AccuWeather.com slash podcast.